we wrote the script and uh, offered it to Patrick. And I got a call back from his agent saying he doesn't really like the script. So we said, well, you know, that's too bad. So now we go and we look around, we find that Tony Curtis, who was in London, is available and would be interested in doing it. And I was always a great fan of Tony Curtis because although he started out as kind of a uh, attractive young leading man and all of that, he became a very significant, I felt, and a highly skilled actor. I mean, if you look at the summation of all of the films he's done, there's some wonderful pictures there and some wonderful performances. Burt Lancaster was his mentor uh, for a movie called Sweet Smell of Success, where uh, Tony played uh, Sidney Falco, a sycophant to uh, Burt Lancaster's version of, you know, a powerful Walter Winchell type character. So uh, we offered the script to Tony. He accepted it. He was in London. I get a call from uh, Patrick's agent, said Patrick would like to come in and talk to you. Now, he'd already turned it down. I said, well, but I know Patrick's kind of eccentric. So I said, okay. So he came in and we talked for a while and he said, well, you know, I'll do it. And I said, well, it's very awkward, Patrick. You know, the word we got back from your agent was you didn't like the script, which we translated into you're not wanting to do the show and we've already made an offer to another actor. So it was a very awkward meeting and Patrick left, uh, but we had Tony. And Tony, uh, who's maybe one of the most malleable actors in, in the history of film, uh, called me up and he said, you know, there's a scene in the beginning of the script, he's in London, I know it, and the scene had to do with the fact that he was calling his ex-wife because he was in trouble for money and trying to borrow some money from her. So uh, this meant, you know, he was kind of in a cheap hotel room calling her, she's married to a dentist or someone. and. Um, he said, I got an idea about that scene. I said, really, what's that? He said, well, I don't really want to talk to her, so I think I could play it standing and taking a shower. And I'd just put the phone on the toilet by the shower, and occasionally I'd say, yeah, 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 and hang up. Now, of course, this is antithetical to what the scene is about, and I panicked when I heard this. I thought, oh my God, I hadn't done that much directing, and Tony's a big star, so what am I gonna do? And I said, well, why don't, why don't we talk when you get back to LA? So I went over to Burt Lancaster's office, and uh, whom I knew, and I said, here's what happened. And Burt thought about it, and he said, you know, he's much more afraid of you than you are of him. <laughs> and Tony showed up, and then on the first day we're shooting, we were down in San Pedro, we have to photograph an oil tank, and you gotta get it, because oil tankers don't sit around. You have to de-louse them in the fire department, and they go away. And it was a very simple shot, you just, showed the tanker and you kind of dollied back and there was Tony and Brenda Vaccaro who was the co-star and they sort of fold into a two shot. And I noticed Tony's got this hat on and the hat is sort of like a, a forest ranger in Canada would wear. And I'm looking at the hat and uh, I said to him, we were getting ready to shoot, I said, Tony, uh, the hat, you see how great, isn't it? I said, it is, I said, it is, but I don't really think it's quite right for this scene. He said, really? I said, yeah. Took the hat and tossed it away. We went on from there and he couldn't have been nicer about everything. In fact, it got to the point where I could block out a scene without him and he would come in and say, oh, great, it's all done, <laughs> you know? And uh, after about halfway through, he would come up and he'd take my hand and he'd kiss the back of my hand and say, how are we today, dear boy? You know? He had a great time. He loved to get a little joke in between the time you said cut and you said print. This was part of his fun that he had with things. And uh, so we, we ran it at uh, what was called ASI, which they used to test films and movies where people had a dial, you know, and they'd have to, if they're liking it, they turn it up and down. So we're sitting up in their booth watching these numbers roll around, you know, if they like it or not. And when it's over, it turned out it got one of the highest rated numbers at ASI that they'd ever gotten. So the next morning, studio calls us and said, we've sold four to our movies to NBC. I said, great. We would go over to NBC the next morning and the head of their research, who later became head of programming, said uh, it went very well. Some of the highest numbers we've ever gotten testing a pilot. Uh, however, uh, and they love 
Larry Hagman, and they love Brenda Vaccaro, but they really don't like Tony Curtis. And I said, well, Larry Hagman is going to be gone, and Brenda's going to be gone, and Tony's the star of the show. Why are we making these? He said, well, we have a deal and it's all set. <laughs> so we went back and we made four of them, uh, and it was like everybody on the lot knew this show is a dead show. <laughs> it was a strange experience. So we're making a show we know is not going to last, so we just did the best we could. We made the four, and it went away. 